So we're here today on the banks of the River Annan, just up from the Solway Firth here. And this is the old offtake weir for the Chapel Cross Power Station, um, where we've recently installed an eel pass. The eel pass is like a cable duct type structure, and within that there are little bristles, like an artificial ski slope or a plastic broom. There's a little bit of water running through the pass at all times, and as the little baby eels, the elvers and glass eels, they're able to climb up and through the bristles in the pass. The eels are not particularly strong swimmers at that point in their life cycle, and they can't jump. So if they were to attempt to get up that fast flowing high weir, they would just have no chance of success. Some eels have been observed further up in the Annan catchment, but we understand from our colleagues at SEPA that the, the levels are lower than you would expect from comparable river systems. So Scottish Water came to site with a, a fisheries ecologist and we, we conducted an assessment and, and his professional view was that there was very limited chance that the eels would be able to get up it. The weir was built in the 1950s to hold back the water such that we could supply water to Chapel Cross. It was used as part of the cooling process, as part of the, the power production by the site. We are now decommissioning, so we actually no longer need the water from the river. We've no heat produced on the site, so no cooling is now required. Working with the, the local stakeholders and with Scottish Water, as we used to pump water from the river, it's important for us working with the Nuclear Decommission Authority that we protect the local habitat and environment. We hope that the eels migrate further up the river and the population starts to grow and the, the species become less endangered. Part of the problem is that the river has these high canalisation walls which mean that the eels couldn't even get around the sides of the banks. An eel, because they can leave the water, they would climb up and crawl through the wet grass but um, because hard walls in the river here, that just wasn't an option for them. The black metal box, it runs up along the side of this overflow weir here and that box contains the bristles which had the wet flow going through it. We're just about to get into the sort of peak migration window for the elvers. We're very hopeful in the next month or so we'll see a few of them going up the pass. The eels live part of their life in the freshwater and part of their life in the saltwater. An eel will spend most of its life living in the freshwater in a stage known as the yellow eel. So they're sort of brown and yellow coloured to hide in the mud. They live there for 5, 20 years. What they don't do is reproduce in the rivers. At a certain point, once they've got fat enough, big enough, they will start to metamorphize and the eels will develop stronger fins, more musculature. They'll change color from uh, the yellowy, sort of browny color to uh, a, a very, very beautiful silver color. Once they've completed that, they will start to move out and they will swim all the way across the Atlantic to an area called the Sargasso Sea, which is off Bermuda, 4,000 miles. I should say we think they do that. No European adult eel has ever been observed to making that journey. The ones that have been tagged tend to get eaten by other animals in the sea. So there's something of a mystery as to whether that is the case. What we do know is that the little baby eels, we do observe them in their smallest form in the Sargasso Sea. And as you catch them and count them, as, the, as you move over to the Atlantic, going back to Europe, they get bigger and bigger. As they begin to come into the fresh water they, they, they pick up a pigmentation they start to become brown and uh, in that stage of their life they're known as the elvers that's the stage that we're most interested in we're very close to the sea here um, so we're hopeful as the elvers come up the river those are the ones we're going to target getting into this eel pass in the 1980s we began to see a really severe drop in population of the eels at some points in the 90s, we were losing 15% of the population every year. We've maybe lost 90, perhaps as much as 98% of the species abundancy in a very short window of time. Because of that reason, eels are now listed as critically endangered, which is the highest classification pretty much before extinct in the wild. The true cause of that population decline is not fully understood. Um, there's a number of factors. It could be pollution. We know there's a morbidity associated with hydro turbines. Um, we know that the eels, because they live in the deep water, are very fatty fish, they pick up some of these more persistent pollutants. There's a, also a, a nematode parasite, actually, that was introduced to Europe in the 1980s and that infects their swim bladder. So when they're making that cross-Atlantic journey, we're concerned they, they don't have the ability to regulate their, their depth within the sea, which may be a big problem. The importance of them is, is the fact that they were so abundant and they're, they're such a such a keystone as part of the freshwater ecology of, of Scotland and Europe. If you're a predator, if you like to eat fish, eels are going to be your target fish. So creatures like herons, offspray, and particularly like otters, they're really important to create that stable ecosystem. That's why it's really important that we do all we can to help the species recover.